Welcome to this episode of The Standing Ovation. I think it is really well suited for banking uh, because banks, you know, and I spent 30 years at a large bank and I, you know, from experience, I can tell you that banks are an aggregation of acquisitions. So they, you know, most banks, we've gone from 10,000 banks in the United States in particular down to 5,000 banks over the last number of decades through lots of acquisitions. The bank I was at, we had done over 300 acquisitions. And when you do all of those acquisitions, um, you tend to get all of these legacy systems that get just layered in. And then you have many different instances of CRMs, of ticketing systems, of core banking systems. And a lot of these systems, because it's so difficult to make the investment when you're in an acquisition mode to a new, a new operating system, a new, a new core platform, uh, there tend to be a lot of legacy systems that exist in the banking vertical in particular. The other, the other thing that's gone on in the world of banking is that fintech has emerged and fintech companies for the last couple of decades now have been taking point solutions and innovating around them and delivering these amazing digital experiences for a particular solution, whether it be lending or merchant services or payments or, you know, you name it. And so there's been an emergence of hundreds of amazing fintech companies. And in order to keep up, the banks don't have the ability to build those solutions. So they've, they've been connecting and partnering with them. And so what they do is they partner with these firms like Affirm or Stripe or Plaid, and the list goes on and on. And so all of these banks now are in this phase of doing integrations. They're integrating to Bill.com and to Avid Exchange, and the list goes on. And they're all doing the same integrations, right, with the same firms. So what our software platform does is a couple of things. One, um, because we use pre-built connectors, we can connect to multiple CRM systems and legacy CRMs to provide a holistic view of a client. And that's super important for a bank to get that uh, holistic view. Banks have also, because the way they've acquired, they've acquired lines of business built around products. And those products tend to be operating in silos as standalone. We can connect both the data and the experience across those silos. And that is very important. And then back to my final point was that because of all the third parties that they're partnering with, uh, we have the ability to, again, we have a library of pre-built connectors to firms like build.com and to Fiserv and to Avid Exchange. And we can reuse those connectors to get other banks up uh, on those connections without having to spend time and money on the integrations to do it. So we enable speed to market, speed to a better experience. We enable what we call seamless journeys instead of broken journeys across both these lines of business, the legacy systems and the third party uh, uh, firms. And because of that, the platform can provide a holistic view to customers, seamless journeys across that entire ecosystem, which ultimately for both the team members at the bank and the clients at the bank delivers a far better experience. So for all of those reasons, you know, we see Ovation CXM as really and a really important solution for the banking vertical in particular. I think that inevitably there's two things that are important around those conversations. We're having some of those conversations with clients is, is two things. First off, that our software really drives fantastic returns on investment. So you can't think about the spend for customer experience management with Ovation as an expense. You have to think about it as an investment in your customers, in your organization that you're going to get a return on. And because of the outcomes that we see, double digit increases in revenue, double digit increases in retention, uh, significant strong double digit increases in customer satisfaction, net promoter score, and a reduction in operating expenses. For all of those reasons, uh, when you look at year over year outcomes, uh, once organizations understand those outcomes are real, they don't see the expense of CXM Engine as an expense, they see it as an investment, and therefore it becomes an easier conversation because they know they're gonna benefit from it. That's one point I'd make. The other point I'd make is that 
Um, they're they're going to continue to talk to us. They're going to continue to see uh, customer experience management as really critical and important because there really today aren't other companies doing what we do. And so the idea that I can manage my customer experience in the moment because of journey management, the ability to observe customers in a journey, um, that ability to impact customers in the moment versus surveying them later is really critical. It's a differentiating factor for our company. And it's a reason for customers to invest now because they're able to do something very different that's going to help them retain customers and satisfy customers in ways that they couldn't before. That's the first point. The second I'd say is that um, because of our journey design, journey orchestration, journey building tools, uh, companies today are able to actually manage customer journeys across buying journeys, across you know application, onboarding, activation journeys, and ongoing servicing journeys in ways that they've never been able to before because of the capabilities we offer. And again, because that exists um, and, and they now can do things very differently than they've been able to before, they're really willing to spend the money because they understand that this gives them important capabilities they just didn't have before. So for those couple of reasons, even in an economic downtime, when customers are thinking about spend, they know they'll get an investment on return and they know they're getting new differentiated capabilities that are critical uh, to delivering great experience. And for those reasons, we see that uh, we're able to overcome those, those concerns. First and foremost, what a firm should be looking for in a customer experience management, there's really at least six things that come to mind for me that are important. The, and these are in no particular order of priority, but they're all important. Number one is what you want to be able to do at a company, whether it's a bank or any vertical, right, is you want to be able to impact the customer experience in the moment as they're interacting with your company, not later on by serving them and getting their feedback and then trying to change a process that takes too long so this idea of being able to deliver an impact uh the, the the great customer experience in the moment versus later is really important that's number one number two um this idea of creating holistic customer journeys that extend across your lines of business across products and across third parties so that you have these great seamless customer experiences from the buying journeys to application onboarding, activation journeys, and ongoing servicing journeys. So these holistic journeys, being able to build them and manage them is really important versus today, what most companies are doing is they manage individual touch points. Um, there's inbound calls or there's inbound emails or there's uh, moments uh, that they're interacting with clients but that's not really built into a holistic journey uh, management uh, uh, process. That's the second point. The third point I'd make is the idea of being able to see your customer uh, holistically and have visibility to a customer 360 degrees. And that's about connectivity. So it's finding a CXM platform that has the ability to connect your data systems. So your CRM systems, your ticketing systems, uh, third-party technology companies and providers being able to take the data from those different points and connect them so that you get a unified view of your customer across these disconnected ecosystems. That's the third thing that a CXM engine uh, platform needs to do. The fourth is that it really needs to be dynamic, not static. What I mean by that is uh, platforms today like Salesforce, Dynamics, HubSpot, ServiceNow, homegrown systems, they're all hard-coded systems. And in order to make changes to those platforms, you have to go to a development team, get on a list, and they'll put you on a roadmap to get those changes done that can often take months or, or longer and, and are very expensive. A dynamic system is different. It's low-code, no-code, so that you can make changes to the software very quickly and that really anybody in the organization, you don't have to be on a dev team to make those changes. So that's the fourth thing really important is dynamic, low code, no code versus static, hard coded, heavy administrative systems. Uh, the fifth point I'd make is that you really want to be able to have insights into what's happening with your customers now so that you get intelligent insights uh, in real time 
versus the idea of reactive knowledge fetching that you have to go and do. Meaning I've got to go and talk to my customers and talk to my teams about what's going on so that I understand and then I can fix it. So this idea of intelligent real-time insights versus reactive knowledge fetching is the other thing that a CXM platform must do. And then finally, I'd say it's critical that the CXM platform has to be able to extend into and through your existing tech stacks with no re-architecture uh, versus having to re-architect your systems. And the nice thing about uh, uh, a, CXM and a CXM platform that can do that is it reduces spend significantly uh, for your technology teams so that you can uh, spend less, uh, you can spend on SaaS, but you're putting in technology that actually connects to your CRMs, connects to your ticketing systems, connects to your other technology without having to re-architect that. So really, um, for all of those reasons, six reasons, um, it's important that you look for those things when you're looking at a CXM engine platform. And then finally, I'd say it's all about outcomes. Inevitably, that that the, the CXM platform that you're working with has to be able to show you through existing client implementations that you've been able to reduce operating expense, increase revenue, increase you know, retention, and increase customer satisfaction. Because inevitably, those six things are important. But if they don't produce the outcomes that you need, then you're not getting what you need. So I think looking for those uh, capabilities but then also making sure that the platform can deliver the outcomes that the organization wants.